Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's myself, Paul Nealon, with Gary Spain, as always, and we're joined by Brian Gartland, captain of Dundalk. And here today, it's been a very, very busy day in terms of Dundalk Football Club and obviously last night, but off the back of last night's results, how are you feeling today? Yeah, ecstatic. I sort of pinching myself today. Um, I suppose you're waking up and you're thinking, did that, did that happen? Um, cloud nine, and then... You know, the boys of a few of us gathered to watch the draw uh, together in the canteen. And yeah, just I suppose you you got a good mix between it. You've got a glamour tie with Arsenal. Um, and we've got games where we think we can go and get points. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of been a bit of a negative spin of, well, I suppose last month and kind of coming into this month, it's been quite good. But um, since Vinny's kind of left, it kind of, you know, Kind of came to its kind of end, final end there with, with Vinny, unfortunately. Um, had a great season last season. But now Filippos came in and today he's been offered the job because he's done a fantastic job since he's been in. But but how did you just kind of go from, from that negativity to, to where he's at now? Because we, we know from following the league and watching the league and how good of a team Dundalk are, that you're kind of looking at, at the team and going like, there was games there we were watching early on the season wondering how he's losing because the squad just have. But you seem to have turned it around. It just seems to be a bit more, you know, belief amongst the squad and stuff like that. So how, how when was the kind of big change for you? Yeah, that's exactly it. I think with all sport, you got to remember that the majority of it is is mental, the side of it, you know, the psychological side of it. Um, no players become bad overnight or, you know, lose any talent or anything like that. Um Again, it comes down to, I suppose, confidence, belief. Um, we had a couple of performances that weren't that bad. And the results, you know, we had a bit of luck against us and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, sometimes you can't put your finger on it with football and it, it just happens. And um, Filippo's just, you know, I've said he's confident. Um, and confidence breeds confidence in other people. You know, it, it rubs off in other people and... Uh, there's a good vibe, good atmosphere, um, and it's just hard work back to basics. And you know, you get one result, and it could grow from there. What are um, Filippo and Giuseppe like in the the dressing room? What type of um, st- what's their management style? Uh, yeah, they're they're completely different to each other. Um, Filippo's, like I said, he's confident. Uh, they're organised and structured. Um, and yeah, he's he's confident. He you know he's very assured of himself, um, and that breeds confidence in other people. Uh, Giuseppe is he's a great character, um, completely different. He's very animated, very passionate. Um, show a lot more, I suppose, of that side of things. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great rapport with the players, and it's a great relationship between them with the, with the players already. Um, I think you can see that, you know, celebrations last night and different stuff. So, um, yeah, different styles to previously what we had, different styles in coaching, um, even in the way we're going to play. Like, there's been changes uh, in different aspects. And I suppose that's normal. No no same players the same, or no two players the same. No two managers are exactly the same. So, um, yeah, it's been different, but it's been good. Just for yourself, bro, obviously getting back into the team because I, I remember, you know, even recently, you know, the Bowes defeat. You were on the you were on the bench that night, um, and just kind of strike me. I, I seen you, and you were down actually influencing the linesman on the sideline there, and the fact, well, the the so called fans, the stewards, were giving you a bit of grief. But uh, but since then, you've been back in the team. Is that, you know, before? How did you find that for yourself? Kind of going from not playing at all to being put in, and now playing the biggest games. You know, in recent times for Dundalk as well. Yeah, obviously it's it's great. Um, it's tough when you're not in the team, and every footballer has that in their career at some stage, somewhere. Um, you just have to keep working hard, keep believing in yourself, and keep yourself right so that if you are called upon, you're ready and you don't let the team down. Um, you don't let yourself down. Um, because it's easy to get into a rut and you know blame everyone else. So you know if you look after yourself and, and keep doing your things right, when you are called upon or if a chance comes with someone injured or something like that, um, you're you're better equipped to take it. Um, but like that's happened all over the park with our team. You look at Sean Murray, last few games been phenomenal with us. Um, 
two goals, two vital goals, get us where we are. Um, Dara Lee, he obviously, you know, coming in and Dane Massey has got injured and Dara's got a, got a run against as a result. And Dara's attitude and like the way he lives his life is like the other professional. Uh, everything he does is driven towards it. Um, and that's because he has that drive. And even if he wasn't playing and Dane was in ahead of him, you know, he has himself ready. And unfortunately, Dane gets injured. But Dara's in top quality shape. And, you know, he's he's ready to step in and step up to this level um, and play straight away. And like I said, that's all over the park with us. Um, I know you you picked on, on my story sort of thing, but there's plenty of players in the same thing. Um, and everyone goes in and out sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's just about, I suppose, being disciplined, driven. And uh, yeah, the having the focus on the long road. Sorry, that knock line Wi Fi, Gary. Go on. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> so, do you think the the win over Sheriff in particular, and and then following on with the win last night, do you think that's really surprised a lot of people, and certainly proved a lot of people wrong? Yeah, I think the win win and Sheriff did big time. Um, their team, someone said over 30 million putting together, you want to see their facilities out there, it was 200 million um, they're, they're literally trying to be like Shakhtar and those teams where they bring in South American, African players, people from all over and uh, make group stages and sell them on and make, make money off them so um, for us to go out and I thought it was a great solid performance um, and, and come away with the win was was brilliant. Now we're going into last night, different story. We're favourites, um, but I thought we've come away from it going through win a three one. But we've come away from it knowing we can perform so much better, especially in that second half. Um, so there's room for improvement. But that's that's a brilliant thing to come away from. We've come away with a win, with confidence from it, but knowing we need to improve and where we can improve. You mentioned last night, and it was a bit hairy. At, it was a bit hairy at two one. And uh, how important was Dan O'Kelly's goal to to clinch it? Ah, oh, it was vital, vital. Um, we we knew with their style of play, um, they go back to front, and if if you leave them too much time on the ball at the back, they're able to pick out you know a more accurate pass, or we'd be have to drop a little bit deeper because they've got the time on the ball to to pick out those passes. So, uh, the deeper you are, and the more you're inviting that on. Like those those balls are coming up closer to our box, and all it needs is, you know, you don't get a clear header clearance on it. It, it drops between two years to somebody. It takes a bad bounce, skips off some way, and and it's game on. And and that's what happened. They got a deflected goal. Uh, they didn't have too many chances before that in the game, uh, and after that their tails are up, and we didn't respond too well um, in terms of keeping the ball and controlling the game. After that, you know, we need to have more authority there and control the game but what we did do brilliantly was we kept you know our shape uh defensively we were disciplined um we sent them out wide um yeah a couple of hairy moments there was off the line and and blocks you know people putting their body on the line um and, but so that goal then just you know just settles it all then there's there's no coming back i didn't think for them then i suppose the, the next thing then is the draw today i mean the one that stands out for me is arsenal how excited is going to the Emirates? What's that going to be like? Yeah, <laughs> excited or what? Uh, you, you're not the one that might be marking about me. Um, <laughs> or like is it? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Neither of them short the yard of pace. Um, ah, it's it's what dreams are made of. Um, you're going to get a big team no matter what in part one. Uh, there maybe would have been a couple of teams we fancy we'd actually have a good crack off. Um, but all the other ones are, are giants. So if you're going to get going to get a big team, we want to win the Premier League, wanted to go to the Emirates or or White Hart Lane. So um, yeah, that's a it's a great one to look forward to the fixture they're out now. We have them away in the second game on 29th, and then the last game in Dublin on the December 10th. We're at home to them. So um, big nights to look forward to. But um, we've I think we've we've to finish the league before we even play them then. So we've got seven league games between now and then. So my guys, you, you got Arsenal, Vienna uh, and Mould. We all kind of have, well, obviously Arsenal do, but, you know, Rapid Vienna have a good European history and um, Mould as well, kind of coming up now. Soldier was obviously their manager. 
you know, they're, they're well heard of now. They're kind of like a modern day Rosenberg sort of, kind of in that mold. No pun intended there. <laughs> but um, you kind of, we'll go back to 2016 and the, you know, the games that you went through then. And obviously there's still yourself, Gano, um, David McMillan, Dane, Gary Rogers, all these players who have that experience playing. How, how much do you think that's going to help you you know, for for the, especially the young lads, you think of Dan O'Kelly and and these younger lads. You know, the experience that you guys will have, kind of similar to last night, the way he's got got through the uh, game at the kind of sticky patches. Yeah, like you named all the lads there: Chris Shields, Patrick McElhenney. Um, I hope I'm not leaving anyone out. Then you know that was here before. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's great to have that experience, you know, and that wealth of thing in the squad. But what's also brilliant to have in that squad is that fearlessness that you'll have from Dan Cleary, Dan Kelly, uh, Mickey Duffy, other lads that um, there's a balance of that. There's that youthful enthusiasm and fearlessness and they can take on the world as well, you know. So, um, yeah, experience is brilliant, but um, the other side of it, it's great to have as well. So um, we have a good mix in the squad and like we've got a, we've got a deep, deep squad. So, um Yes, it uh, hopefully it stands to us coming into these games. Obviously, uh, like all those teams, you're saying Molda and Rapid Vienna, have, you know, the big European pedigree. Um, so they're going to be tough, tough games. But we're hoping we can take something from it, have a good start. I think uh, we're at home to Molda first game. You know, we'll be looking to win that. And if you can open the group with a win, you know, conference will be sky high um, and, you know, build from there, hopefully. Will the recovery room have LED, you know, uh, signage around the stadium for TV for, for the other games? <laughs> I could have had the sign up behind me here. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It depends. The price might go up for the other games. I might be able to afford it. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was great to have that for the business going up around, and it's it's um, it's got good hits on the website and stuff from it. So it's 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 really well worth it. Actually, it's it's been I couldn't believe actually the response online. In terms of people, you know, um, checking into the website, seeing what it's about, and that so, uh, good investment that way. And it was uh, one of the lads at the club that just half mentioned it to me. Um, you, well, you may as well give it a plug there, Brian, and you know, tell people what it is if they don't know. <laughs> it's a sports recovery service, so it's in uh, Junction Six in Castle Knock. So, um, we offer facilities such as a, a cryo spa, cold spa, hot spa, infrared sauna, massage guns, back ballers, um and compression boots so you get 10 minutes in all them and 20 minutes in the compression boots for 25 quid and uh, what it does do is it helps just recover the body body from exercise and uh, gets blood flowing more oxygen to to the muscles and gets rid of that muscle soreness and uh gets you back to recovery quicker and, and hopefully reduces the risk of injuries and, and you know gets you performing better so it's something i've been doing for years uh using a few of our lads use a lot and you look over in the states in uh where where the big money is in sport and every nfl nba and even the premier league use all this sort of facilities daily so um uh, something i thought i'd try set up here and, and get going and hopefully it, it works out well brilliant best of luck with that gary i know you wanted to ask brian about um the league uh, so far away there yeah, so I was just looking, I mean, how important is it that you get back into Europe next season? I mean, it, top three, I presume, has to be the aim at this stage. Yeah, it's vital. Um, really, and below finishing champions, for us, you know, isn't really acceptable. So, obviously, it's a poor season. Um, that's not where we're going to end up. Uh, so, it's vital that we get back into the into the European spots. And, obviously... Um, with the new format coming with Europe, you're going to have Champions League, Europa League and Europa 2. Um, so it looks like Irish teams might end up going into Europa 2 and only, you know, you go into that new format and yeah, there'll be prize money at stake, but um, you need to be winning the league then to, you know, to have a chance of getting into Europa League if you get knocked out of the Champions League. So there's all new things uh, coming down the line with that way, so it's vital because it's guaranteed prize money, and um, the club is based off that. Like that's where we want to be in Europe, uh, building every year and getting to the group stages like we, like we have this year. So, do you think your performances? I mean, this is your coefficient is just so strong now. 
that it could really help you next year in the Europa 2 or whatever, it's the Europa Conference, whatever it's called, that you could be seeded for uh, certainly the first round, probably the second round if you can get through and possibly even the third round. So this could help you for getting back into the group stages again. Yeah, for that Europa too, um, it really could because uh, obviously there's eight countries, I think, being added to it that would be of lower coefficient than, you know, what's there or or than us anyway. Um, so we'd end up sort of higher up the coefficient because all the big teams would be taken out and they'd be put it directly into the Europa League um, instead of having to go through any qualifiers like you see the last night, Galatasaray, I think Wolfsburg, a couple of other big teams, Milan were nearly knocked out, they got through, but the other teams were knocked out. Um, your wife obviously want these big clubs and in in group stage of these tournaments. Um, so that's, I suppose, what this is designed to do. And then uh, the, the smaller clubs are being fed into this Europa too, and, and the prize there is that you have a better chance of getting prize money. You know, it would be good prize money, better chance of getting that, and then you build from there. So, um, yeah, I think with the coefficient of the league, it's done every five years or so, that with our 2016 run, I suppose running out soon, that um, the Northern Ireland League was going to, I don't know what way it's going to work now, but they were going to pop ahead of us um, or be close enough. Um, so we were going to, the league was going to take a drop in coefficient. So um, I think all this stuff in the background, a lot of people don't realise it. It's vital for the league how all the teams do every year. It's it's vital. Uh, we need other teams doing well for us to be put in a better position going forward. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping you know we can build on that and the wins will build the coefficient for the league here and for us. Um, because people, as people say, I suppose it was a a lucky draw and so on this year. And yeah, we got, you know, the fortune. It could have been much, much worse teams we got. But um, our success over the last few years has put us in this position that we were seeded going into the draw and that we dropped down and were seeded again, you know, or were seeded again against the Andorran team and, and so on. And um, so, yeah, we get a bit of luck, but we also made our own luck by, by what we've done over the past few years. Yeah, an example of that even is, although we're by far the lowest ranked country with a team in the group stages, you're not actually the lowest ranked club, according to UEFA, in the group stages. You're ahead of quite a few of the clubs in the Europa League, which shows how successful you've been in recent years. Yeah, it's it's nice to see that. And one thing I noted, um, the strength in the Europa League of teams this year, like Looking at the pot one, two, and three, Milan in pot three, Leicester pot two, and um, there's not many small countries. I think ourselves, uh, a team from Cyprus, I can't remember seeing any others from, I suppose, what we call smaller or lesser countries. They were all big, big countries in pot three and four. You French teams, you know, in the top league there. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's something that's nice to see. Yeah, and even some of the teams you mentioned, Galatasaray, they're they're out of Europe now. You know, I mean, what's it like to be still going in Europe and the the likes of Galatasaray are gone? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's listen, um, it's just brilliant to be where we are now. Um, it's like I said, we're on cloud nine, and it's it's a bit surreal because of the the few months we've had um, leading up to it. Is that like it's. You know, not many people would have envisaged this, even ourselves, a few weeks ago. But I think, I think as well um, that that we go back to the when the coronavirus first started, and we were fearing that there wouldn't even be a league. And now we're looking at a Dundalk side in the Europa League. I think it's fantastic what a turnaround and what football can do to kind of boost things. You can look at a lot of people. I know, look, there's a certain people within the League of Ireland, fans that aren't happy, fans of like Shamrock Rovers and so on, and others, but there's a lot of fans that are happy, and I would say the more so, the majority are, are happy now to see an actual Irish team representing the country in Europe. Yeah, um, like I was saying there, it's by any Irish team doing well, it's it's benefiting any other Irish team in the future, if we, you know, with the coefficient and where we are. I know obviously people are saying um the money generator from it makes it harder for other teams to compete than, you know, if we're, if we're winning a few million and stuff like that. But, um, listen, 
our owners have done this for the last few years without winning a few million, you know, sort of things had us where we are. Um, they've backed us, they've backed the club, and, you know, um, this is their reward for doing that. So, uh, yeah, you're always going to have that, and that's just football rivalry, I suppose. You know, you never want the, your opposite club to see you doing well. I got a few texts from, obviously, I'm from Knockline, where Gary's from, and um, a lot of Rovers lads around there, and uh, a few texts from a few of them, uh, begrudgingly uh, congratulate me they're saying like you know congratulations to me but but not to Dundalk and I don't understand that completely it's fair enough uh, I know where they're coming from they're, they're diehard rovers yeah Gary did you have anything that can you just ask his way about well, that Wi-Fi is brutal mate so, sorry Paul I was just going to ask about the, the fixture congestion because <laughs> you've seven I'll league games left you've six games in the Europa League group stages and potentially three games in the FAI Cup as well. It's a lot of matches in the next few weeks. So how, is, how are you going to cope? Yeah, including last night. That's, uh, I suppose, seven league games and three Euro, three European games in this month by the, by the 29th of October or so. Um, I think the league's meant to finish the next day. Um, so I don't know if our last league game would be brought forward or, that, or every league game would be put on that Sunday then instead. Um, I suppose it's something that's going to have to be looked at. But um, we've been there before. That's ten games in a month. In 2016, we had to do ten games in September and eight in October. But it takes its toll on you. Um, I remember we were home to Zenit, one 0 up, 30, 25, 30 minutes left. I think Massey hit the post, and uh, we had played on the Monday away to Longford and pretty much won the league. And we played on the Friday before that, and then midweek before that. And uh, Zenit got two late goals, you know, and they're always going to be strong finishing against you. Um, but you just wonder, you know, if you didn't have the backlog of games before that, could you have held out a bit longer, even got a draw? Um, so it does take its toll, but we're we're better equipped, I think, squad wise to to uh, to deal with this. With with 22, 24 players that are all capable of starting and competing um, against any team in the league. So, um, so we're we're equipped that way because we've got such talent and abundance there. So, um, yeah, rotation will have to be used, fresh legs, fresh minds. And, um, yeah, I listen full confidence that we'll, we'll be able to do that and still get results in the league and, and be competitive in Europe and, uh, you know, finish off in the European spots. All right, Brian, just, just lastly, obviously, we have a huge uh, playoff game with Ireland coming up next Thursday. And obviously, you've worked very closely and, and successfully with Steve and Kenny. And you mentioned there, obviously, a couple of games in the in the run before in the Europa League. But what what way do you kind of see it going with him and kind of the preparation? I know international football is totally different. But, like, kind of, what what do you kind of feel like it's going to be like for him next week? Um, as I was saying to you before, I, I think... It's not been ideal. Um, I don't think people outside of football realise that the first week they probably had together, um, they were players were in pre-season and they fly in on the Sunday and the first games, you know, they're there on the Monday and then they're flying out and first game away. Uh, so you've hardly any time on the pitch. Uh, you've got new new management, all new management, new. Uh, performance coaches, physios, n- new setup, and you're trying to implement new ways and new styles. Um, so that was a big week and a, a tough week for them because um, you have to try to get results at the same time. And again, the same thing because I suppose there's been European games. Like you see Matt Doherty playing last night in uh, the Europa qualifiers, and that means the likes of Spurs game at the weekend has been pushed back to Sunday, and loads of games are pushed to Sunday. So boys have to fly in late Sunday night or maybe even early Monday, depending on the flight availability. And uh, you're then on match day plus one, you can't do anything on the pitch. Um, into match day plus two, you can't do much. And they're flying out then, I presume, to... Uh, and you're match day minus one from, a, you know, from an international and a massive international. So there's, there's n- hardly any time on the pitch to implement new ways, new styles, new tactics. So I presume there's a lot of video and different stuff going on. But... Um, that's what's, you know, I suppose behind the scenes, it's a difficult way of of what they've come into. And uh, it's COVID related, a lot of it, I suppose, with the fixtures, seasons, pushed back and so on. Um, but So it's a little bit of a hindrance, but, you know, I'd expect to see 
you know, from the first week, the work they've done that it was sank in and, and um, you know, imp- improved performances again. And uh, really excited for it because, um, listen, like I said, I know what Stephen's like and he's he's such a influential and um, manager in terms of he gives players such confidence and belief. Um, I, I really feel, I thought, in passages, especially in the first game, you could see passages of play and they're looking to play, looking to play the ball. Yeah, I know people were quite critical, but there was many times when they had good passages, maybe just in the final third. I, I remember seeing an overlap or a winger getting through and whether it's someone just not seeing the ball or the wrong decision, but they're, they're one pass away from, from slicing through the team a couple of times and that. Um, so let's hope it just builds on it and, and again, like we were last night, it's in games like that. It's it's more about the result than the performance. Um, but uh, obviously they're gonna they're gonna try to perform to the, to their best ability. But um, I'm just hoping they come out with the the result. I think that's something that from what you said there about uh, pre season and what you said about the past. Maybe because there was a kind of a pre season mold, um, that maybe they weren't seeing that final pass, or you know, fatigue might have kicked in, or whatever as well. Not, I'm not making excuses or anything like that. But had we won that game, that first game against Bulgaria, they could be talking about seeing Kenny as a messiah. Some exactly. people are saying saying other things about him, you know, which I think is ridiculous to be honest. I think uh, touching on that, I think people need to remember, um, like, look at the last what five, ten years of football, right? And look at the crowds we're getting Aviva. They're, they're dwindling down. There's not many crowds because it's not attractive football. It's not a thing. If we want to change our ways and we want to change the way we play and we want to be attacking or we want to be entertained or we want to keep the ball, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and time and time again. Look at all the, the, the countries, the, the smaller countries that have. Uh, and football people know that. But that's what Stephen will do. We'll drown out the noise from from the generic uh, social media that, you know, just throw away comments and they'd be caning on everybody one day and then you win the next day and, you know, they're, they're loving exactly, yeah. that sort of thing. So um, as as footballers and people involved in football, that you have to drown out the good and the bad from that side of things. Don't get carried away and then don't let it get you bogged down. But it's a long-term thing uh, if you want to change the national identity of how you play. Um, and I have full belief in them because I know a lot of, the back room there as well that have gone in with them, um, and you know they've they're they're good good football people, and um, you know I trust that they if they're given the time they'll do the job. One thing that strikes me is is that is just his sheer passion and, and love, and you can see how much the Ireland job actually means to him. It's really really refreshing to see. Not not to say that managers before him haven't been that passionate about it. it's just the way he speaks the way he 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 makes it such an honor like talking about being the Ireland manager like it's great to see yeah uh, and it's completely natural you know that that's him that you see he's 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 enthusiasm and like I said about earlier confidence breeds confidence you know that enthusiasm rubs off on people you know you just love going out and playing going and training going and playing that's what it was like at Dundalk at under him um and he's constantly like that, you know. We come into training and he'd be like that, giving a giving a team talk just before training and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's great to have a passionate Irish manager like that, um, that has belief in his players because we've seen over the last few years, like I said, managers putting down their players instead of bigging them up and giving them confidence. They're saying we don't have the players, um, and and it's doing no good for the lads that you're gonna have to that are gonna have to go out and play for you then, um. So Stephen's Stephen's complete officer, and he'll have uh, he has full confidence in people, and he he makes them, you know, feel ten feet tall going out, and that comes off like you said, his enthusiasm and love for the game, and uh, for him, there's no no bigger or better job in in football for him that he could have got than than this, I imagine, because, uh, like I said, his passion for for this country's football is is you know undeniable. Absolutely. Well, Gary, do you want to add in anything there before we let Brian go? I said I keep him half an hour. Yeah, it's now over half an hour. Sorry. <laughs> One last question, because I know all the fans are desperate to get back into stadiums. Uh, would it mean a lot more to you if you can play in the group stages in front of uh, maybe not full houses, but even a few thousand fans? Yeah, UEFA came out with the 
saying thirty percent, but it's obviously on you know up to regional governments or um ah oh, listen, it would be phenomenal if we could we could get a crowd or, uh, even just for for our supporters, you know, um the few thousand that come up to Oriel every week every week that haven't been able to um to be able to give them one even one night out at a game like this, you know, the year we've had um in terms of like with COVID and that and people to imagine just being able to give them, you know, this reward of, of one night out, even if it was, you know, five thousand in the Viva in the Aviva, which is what ten percent you could spread it out, you could do everything. Um you know, obviously we'd be looking for a lot more than that if we could, but even that to get that and give those people the opportunity, um obviously for us to have people behind us, but to give people the opportunity to to come out and see this see us in this setting and in games like against Arsenal. Um the their you know memories of a lifetime um so i sincerely hope you know we'll be at a stage that we will be able to do that well listen brian uh, i know you you've been a very very busy man today you know your son's first birthday i believe um yesterday draw... oh yesterday sorry yeah so, so i didn't get to see him yesterday days, it didn't get to see him yesterday so i had to uh i had to make up for it today and do a bit of family time i was we were in a hotel wednesday night so um a good a good reason I'll tell him when he's older why, why I wasn't there. He'll, he'll understand, I hope. Well, absolutely. Well, listen, it's, it's been a real pleasure having you on. A great chat. I'm sorry for keeping you over over the time we said we oh, would. It's, it's been brilliant having you on. No bother. I'm at the you front. Over the there. Laptop and all went. <laughs> uh, no bother. No rush. Really. Thanks a million. All right. Listen, have a great weekend. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks, lads.